we have uh, uh, obtained the postgraduate seat through the various entrance examinations at our types. So this particular venture was uh, started keeping in mind uh, how the, um, the new dentist, the upcoming dentist who uh, have a lot of aspirations and at the same time, you need to, uh, in fact, go through the same struggle what we went. So uh, it's always better to learn from others' mistakes. That is what we usually say. So uh, this is one platform in which you are able to assimilate many things helpful for your uh, entrance preparations. And more than your entrance preparations, I believe like for the past seven to eight years, what I have heard from the candidates is that like focus has been providing much more than the entrance preparations because there are a lot of clinical uh, subjects which comes in the way and uh, at the end of the one year session you become a better practitioner too not only a better student not only a better mds aspirant but you become a better human being and you become a better um, uh, clinician too so today i am interested in uh, explaining to you how we conduct the endodontics classes so like this why i have chose a one small topic for you uh, endodontic instrumentation but the endodontic instrumentation is not a small topic it's a big topic it has different sections out of which one is uh, your uh, uh, instrumentation classification the other one is the standardization once again Yeah. So basically, I'm. Uh, um, uh, I will be introducing you the um, the subject of endodontics today. Like in endodontic, in endodontics, like one um, uh, topic. What I have chose is this instrumentation. But this instrumentation is a very vast topic, and uh, um, when we teach for our uh, entrance preparations. What we do is that like we go with uh, the classification. We say there is a standardized method of study of uh, endodontics in which, which, which will be helpful for you in your postgraduate preparation. It goes like this. Like we have these traditional classifications because what you see on the screen is ISO classification is basically a very old classification. But may, maybe like uh, uh, when you are in your clinical practice, you may not um, need all these classifications. But when it comes to your entrance preparations, there are many questions which can come from these classifications. And you need to know the different types of instruments what we use in endodontics, starting from the DG16, even the full form of DG16. David Green, Endodontic Explorer, why it is used. Sometimes it will maybe a picture-based question showing the picture of the instrument and then uh, um, uh, asking you to um, write what it is or write the use of it. So a lot of questions can come in that way. And in DG16 itself, we have different classifications, different types, and all those types we need to know and we need to cover. So all these things will be taken in the classes uh, elaborately. We have elaborate classes, elaborate videos for all these classifications and all. So nothing to worry. Like this is something which we can uh, tackle in due course of time. So there will be a little bit of difficulty for you to remember all these, but it's not a problem. Like we, we will be able to manage it. And then certain um specialized instruments which come from the recent times that is the months discovery bus so these are certain instruments which are used in micro endodontics so those uh, what we have seen in the recent uh, um, um trend is that recent papers is that like they are asking a lot of uh, questions from micro endodontics 
So we need to know a little bit about microelectronics also. So Munn's discovery bus also has these classifications. And these classifications are also very important. Then you have certain specialized ultrasonic analytic instruments. And in ultrasonic analytic instruments, there are different types out of which some of these have been asked, which is that that particular instrument which is used for this purpose, which is uh, the particular instrument which is used to remove post, which is the particular instrument which is used to uh, negotiate MB2. So today I'm not going to elaborately discuss this with you, but I just want you to know like how we go ahead with our classes. So I mean, all our classes, what we do is that like we go for a small theory section, which is which includes only the topics of relevance to your MDS entrance preparations. Because if you open the textbook for endodontics, uh, either Inglo or Cohen, you have a sea of information. And that sea of information is not required for your entrance examination. Because as far as uh, the time is concerned, when we start this time of the year, you have hardly six to eight months left for your exam. So it's not practically possible for you to completely le uh, learn from the textbook. So what we do is that we condense and give you the only the relevant topic, what is important for your uh, entrance examination. So these are the different types of endodontic uh, instruments, which are ultrasonic, the pro ultra, tips it is known as the pro ultra tips and in pro ultra tips itself you have different types you have the um different uh, types for different different purposes and these they you may have to remember all these which is also very important so you have the pro ultra endo tip 2 the pro ultra endo tip 1 and everything has a specific purpose don't worry about it all these things will be given in your uh, notes so if you can follow the notes after the class, these notes will be helpful for quick reference. And uh, if you can memorize or uh, revise these notes, you, you can easily attend it for the exam. So we also give certain videos and uh, pictures like this, which will make you help to remember the different, different uh, topics what we cover. And even you have the Pro Ultra Endo Tip 6, 7, 8, which are a bit different, different from the uh, other Pro Ultra tips. So uh, this is something which you need to uh, know and you need to remember for your exams. Also, you have certain surgical tips from Pro Ultra. So these surgical tips are uh, named uh, 1 to 6, depending upon the purpose. These are all zirconium nitride instruments. And these instruments are used for retro preparation and other surgical purposes. When we do this epistectomy, for that specifically, you have these tips. So these, then in, in a, we, you have certain specialized tips called uh, StarTex tips, okay? And that also has a classification. So this classification will be also dealt in detail in your class. So uh, StarTex 1, StarTex 2, StarTex everything has got a specific purpose. For example, you may get an MCQ question, like which is the StarTex MB2 Scouter? The, St the StarTex MB2 St Scouter is uh, your StarTex 2. So these are the certain specific questions you can expect in your exams. So these are certain latest questions. In addition to that, you, we will be dealing with some traditional questions also. So StarTex number three, which is a canal opening scouter. Then you have the metal post remover. You, then you have uh, the uh, StarTex uh, number five, which is used to work on the floor of the purchase. So all these things can be uh, used for your um, uh, endodontic preparation. That is, when do we use ultrasonics? Ultrasonics are used when we, uh, after access preparation, before entering into the pulp chamber. If you have calcifications, if you need to remove a post, if you need to explore without getting perforated, then we need these ultrasonic instruments. And these ultrasonic instruments are highly useful because you get a very good control of them. 
So these configurations we'll be teaching you when you come for the classes. Then you have specialized uh, Kim surgical tips. Okay, so this Kim surgical tips, again, it has a classification from one to six. And uh, they are specifically used for specific surfaces. One, one entrance exam, they have asked this also. So that means that like there are a lot of things which we need to cover in this small period of time. So uh, your entrance examinations are basically a mixture of old as well as new, new, new topics. You, you cannot leave the old ones thinking that they will not come. You cannot leave the new ones also thinking that uh, they will be omitted. No, like usually they ask a mixture of old and new. So how we can prepare for this is basically from the previous year's question papers. So what we have done is that we have in focus, what we have done is that all the staff has, has we have made certain theory topics and notes based on the questions which have been asked again and again in the previous years and uh, based on that we will be discussing our classes we will be putting the videos and you will be able to see the videos and after which you will be able to easily answer all the questions what comes in the exam then you have these small micro openers and micro deep riders. they are also part of your endodontic material. and another topic what usually is asked for your entrance examination is the standardization, which you have to actually take uh, it a bit seriously. How do we standardize your endronic instruments? Because your endronic instruments are standardized with the numbers. So what are these numbers? And these standardization are basically uh, the guidelines given in 1958 by Ingle and Levine. So in those uh, 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 standardized standardization, the instrument numbers are uh, uh, given from 10 to 100. And later, they, some of the numbers were added, like smaller instruments like the eight, six were added, okay? And larger instruments like 110 till 140 were added. Some unique files, that is the sizes in between, in between two um, uh, files were added, like 12.5, 17.5, like, like that. Then you have certain in specific instruments called golden medium instruments, like 12, 17, which are added. So what are these numbers? What are basically these numbers? So this number six, number eight are for calcified canals. And uh, these numbers are basically uh, nothing but the tip size of the instrument. So you have 15 to 40 instruments, 45 to 80 instruments, and all these are color coded. There is a specific color coding. In certain entrance examinations, they have even asked the color coding of instruments. So we cannot omit that also. So this color coding also has to be uh, learned. And the standardization, the method of standardization of these instruments um, by the tip size, that also has to be taken care of. So this will be given as notes to you when you come for the classes. So what are the... Uh, relevance of the tip, tip size of the instrument. So basically, whatever number is the instrument, for example, if you are taking a 40 size instrument, the tip size will be 1 by 100 of that 40. So that means that the tip size of a 40 size instrument will be 0 0.40 millimeter. So that is how we standardize the instrument. So whichever company producing an endronic instrument, okay, they have to uh, take care of two things. One is the tip size. Okay, according to the number, what they put, and also the color that is also standardized. So, what happens is that, like, uh, it's not only the tip size what is standardized for your endo instruments, even the length of the instrument is also standardized. So, usually we get different different lengths of instruments. The most common one is twenty one millimeter and twenty five millimeter, and even you get long longer instruments, twenty eight millimeter, thirty one millimeter instruments are also available. Okay, and whatever will be the length of the instrument, the active area of the instrument is 16 millimeter, one six. That is one, something which you have to remember because these can come as entrance exam questions. And one important uh, questions which they regularly and repeatedly ask is the difference between a K file and a Rima. So what are the difference between K file and a Rima? K files are manufactured from square blank whereas remos are manufactured from triangular blank. So, because since they are 
manufactured from triangular blank, you have sharp edges, 60 degree edges, which are sharper than your K5. So, uh, even like uh, the cutting efficiency varies between K files and reamers. Because of the sharpness, reamers definitely have more and better cutting efficiency. So, there are a lot of things which we need to explain, which will be explained in the class uh, because we need more time for this. So, so this particular topic of uh, endodontic instrumentation will be taken in very detail. So, a lot of things are there, small, small things, but these small, small things matter because one entrance question may come from all these. So, you have, you cannot, you don't have a choice of leaving any of these. So then, then the triangular cross section of reamer, they share the same architecture with a specific type of files called flex R files that can also be asked. Flex R also has the so there are a lot of variations of this K files and reapers which you have to learn about it. Then you have the K flex files in which you have diamond or rhomboidal shape cross sections. So an MCQ question can come in which uh, K flex files has dash cross section. Square, triangular, triangular, diamond, none of the above. So all these small, small questions do really matter in the in your entrance examinations. So what happens is that like uh, these specific files, you need to know the nomenclature. These are very basic questions, and uh, uh, you might have already learned in your in your BDS curriculum. But still, you need to revise it again and again. There are certain things which are very very favorite to the uh, people who set the questions of the entrance examination. Then you have the H file, H file with the spiral fluids, okay? And uh, the denotations of these files, they come in circle, the number, 25 says H file, the number 25 will be written in circle. Whereas in a K file, it will be written in a square. If for a Remo, it will be written in a triangle. So all these small, small things, we have to learn because they add to the questions what is usually asked. So uh, then you have the variations of H files like safety H, H files, safety H strong files, okay, where you have uh, one side non cut. So these are certain things which you have to take care. Then the variations like unifile, okay. So I'm just brushing through all these because this all will be taken in detail in your. Uh, uh, classes and the certain all the variations of these files why we need to see these pictures is mainly because nowadays they ask a lot of picture based questions so these picture based questions you have to be very vigilant because in probably 10 years back and all like the entrance examination was purely based on uh, certain mcqs in which only questions were asked no pictures were shown but now there are a lot of picture-based questions. So these cross-sections, everything you have to remember picture by picture. So that, that memory, what you need to have in your mind, it should be also based on pictures. So pictures are the ones which you have. To. That's the reason why, like I tell all of you, don't throw away your textbooks. We need your textbooks also for your entrance preparation. If you, even if you don't get time to cover the complete textbook, cover at least the pictures. Just go through, whenever you are bored with your MCQs, take your textbooks, okay? And in your textbooks, go through the pictures, all the pictures given in your textbooks. So that will actually help you to remember the pictures in context with the subject. So there are a lot of tips and tricks which we should know, like when we prepare for the entrance examination. And the, the, those are the things what we usually provide to our students. So uh, to give you an idea, this is how we go about. And in instrumentation, they even ask about certain techniques like balance force technique. Balance force technique was given by a person called Ron. And according to him, balance force technique has got uh, two, two parts. The first turn is a one quarter turn clockwise, an apically directed force. And the second turn is an anti clockwise uh, uh, rotation. Okay. And when you do this anti clockwise rotation, what you do is that you give a 
apical folds to maintain your instrument in position. So these small questions can also come. So a lot of questions come based on taper, based on taper, like you will be asked like uh, uh, a particular instrument is having this type, this kind of taper, the tip size is so and so, what will be the size of the instrument at this particular length? So usually all your instruments have D0 at one end and D16 at the other end. One millimeter from D0 is D1. So uh, your uh, tip size is basically D0. Okay. And uh, taper also comes as two person is taper, four person is taper, six person is taper like that. So you have different types of taper, tapers for your instruments. And also you need to know like how that taper comes. So this taper is something which you can um, um, in fact calculate because uh, four percentage taper means it is four divided by 100. That is how it is calculated. It's also known as 0.04. So for every millimeter, there is an increase of 0 0.04 millimeter. That's how it is. So this particular portion of tape, tape, taper of instruments also, you have to understand. <clears throat> so most of your ISO instruments are two percentage taper. <clears throat> so what does that mean? The two percentage taper means with every millimeter, you have an increase of 0 0.02. Uh, so that means that a instrument of 40 size tip size, 40 tip size has got a tip diameter of 0 0.40. One millimeter from 40, it will have a dimension of 0 0.42. Like that, the entire cutting uh, area is 16 millimeter. So they can ask you, like, what is the diameter at this particular length of the instrument? So these are some questions which you need to understand. A little bit of mathematics comes here, which we will teach you in detail. There is nothing to worry about. And also certain specific instruments they can ask. And one such instrument, which is always been asked is uh, an instrument called Pro Taper. So Pro Taper configuration we will teach you during our classes, okay? And the tip sizes and their tapers. Pro, Pro Tapers doesn't have a fixed taper. They have a progressive taper. The taper is progressive. So this progressive taper instruments called pro taper has to, they, it has to be studied in detail, which will be which will take in the classes. And certain basic things of these instruments also have to be learned. Like what is a pitch, which means especially when it comes to rotary instruments, certain technical terms have been asked. And in rotary instruments, they usually ask about nickel titanium. A lot of properties of nickel titanium we need to know, which we will teach you uh, the, how to go about with nickel titanium. So what are the different uh, types of nickel titanium? And then the a um, lot of questions about rotary instrumentation and the newer concepts of instrumentation, like there is an instrument system called self-adjusting files. And uh, then there are a lot of new files with the uh, reciprocations. So all these, have to be covered when you learn for your entrance examinations. And some certain basic uh, knowledge about the pitch, flute, and helical angle. So what do you mean by pitch? Between two cutting edges, you have, a, you have a distance. And that distance is called pitch. It is different for different instruments. Then flute is the space between two cutting edges. So whatever space you have is called the flute. So basically, what do you mean by fluid space? Fluid space of an endronic instrument means, uh, suppose if somebody says that the endronic instrument has more fluid space, that means that you have a lot of space between your um, in cutting, cutting blades. So what is the advantage of having more um, um, yeah, what is the advantage of having more fluid space the advantage of having more fluid space is that like when the instrument cuts in the uh, root canal, the whatever dentinal shavings you have will be collected and taken out of the, of the, of the canal. And you have something called as the helical angle. Helical angle is the angle what you have with the long axis. See, every, every fluid has a, a particular angle. And this particular angle makes, makes, an angulation with the long axis of your instrument. And that is known as 
the helicoid. So that means that like what I want all of you to understand today is that like not to learn this uh, topic rather it is a just a demonstration of how we are going to go ahead with the uh, ex um, with that subject and i have got a question in the chat box by from archana the difference between pitch and floor space uh, archana the pitch means the distance there is a distance between if you if you can see uh, two lines here in this picture so two yellow lines you are able to see in this picture like they indicate two cutting edges because your rotary instruments will be having two different cutting edges and the distance between these two cutting edges is known as the pitch whereas flute is basically the space space is a volume and pitch is a distance pitch you can demonstrate you can denote by two millimeter three millimeter like that whereas flute is a volume flute means like it's a space so that's the difference between flute and pitch then so this is how we explain um, the subject in our focus and after we explain the uh, a particular topic what we do next is to discuss mcqs and these mcqs are uh, uh, usually they have been asked traditionally many times in your uh, um, uh, entrance examinations so then we need to answer these questions so you can actually type in the chat box because once you have completed um, um, going through the theory then when you get the questions it will be very easy for you to answer it so one question what i have given you is this in a root canal treatment the canal orifices are located by because we just covered it in this so you can type in your chat box all of you can type in the chat box what is the answer to this so that's how it is like see like once we have already covered this particular topic in our theory then it is very easy for you to answer the questions yes very good very good it is dg16 explorer the answer is dg16 explorer yes so like that we will have more questions uh, the number in the handle of the rookal instrument denote again this is something which we have already discussed now like when you have a number in the handle of the root canal instrument or they might even give you the picture of a root canal instrument and ask you like what is the tip size of this instrument so what what, what is this like when you when you say that you have a k5 of size 40 what does that 40 mean what is the number what you see in the handle of the root canal instrument denote you can you can uh, put your answers in the chat box Yes. So the main advantage is that, like, when you have the theory which is already taken, okay, it is very easy for you to answer the questions. The diameter of the tip, one one hundredth of a millimeter. So many of you have answered as A. A is a wrong answer because uh, the wrong, the length of the instrument in one tenth. So you shouldn't uh, confuse between and normal uh, instrument which is used in conservative dentistry and the endodontics. So these are certain things which you get confused. So usually, like when we teach, we usually compare it with the other standardization also. Because all of you might have learned the standardization of a, of a normal hand instrument. In a normal hand instrument, the, the first number is the one which you all got confused with. So the number in the handle of a root canal instrument. We have already covered that in the in today's topic. That a root canal instrument, the number, the number, for example, the thirty number thirty root canal instrument. What does that thirty means? Thirty is nothing but the diameter at the tip, and it is represented as one hundredth of a millimeter. So a number thirty means thirty divided by hundred. The tip size will be zero point three zero. Got it. So again, this is something which you have to take. So all these mistakes, let it happen when we teach. So when you answer your, your, your questions, so let all these 
mistakes happen. So what happened here was like um, it was uh, uh, Hamda who gave the option A first and all of you followed it. So probably all got confused with just one answer. So don't see what others answer. So stick on to your own philosophies. And this is how, this is what makes you different from others. So not even a single person has given the correct answer. That means that you need to be much more serious in your preparations. Let's go to the next question. So with every question answering like this, we learn something different. So all of you have answered wrong in this particular question. No. Purple colored dreamer is an upper. So I gave you the color coding, right? And in that color coding, like there is one question. So don't mug up these questions and go. Okay. The color coding is purple colored dreamer is an upper. So you can type the answers in the chat box. Yeah, yes. So this is how we go about. The answer is 10. Those who got the wrong answers, don't worry. You have it, in fact, concentrated in the classes. And even I didn't elaborately tell you this time because we, we had a lot of topics. I just wanted to demonstrate how it is being taught. So when it comes in the notes, you get a better picture. The answer is 10. Temperature of a glass bead sterilizer. Glass bead sterilizers are no longer used in aeronautics, but these questions can come. So these, this is something which you have to take care of. Sometimes there are certain things which are not taken as a theory topic, but questions may come. So whenever you see the guide, whenever you learn from the guide, there are two types of questions. The questions which is directly from a theory topic, okay, and certain questions which you have to remember. So there is a small technique for this. You can take a small book. You can take a small, small piece of book. You get the small books and write it down. All these numericals, what you need to remember for your exams, you write it down in, in your uh, uh, small book. And whenever you want to revise, you don't actually have to take the entire book. Rather, take the small book and revise so that these numbers, numericals, you will not forget. When it is made of same steel, size 55, which is more prone to fracture. So we learned the cross section of both reamer and K5. Am I right? So when it comes to size 55, which is more prone to fracture, you have even H5 also, which is more prone to fracture. Yeah, generally. H files are more prone to fracture. Okay. So when you get a question like this, you start comparing between Reamer and K5. I'm sure that Archana has done that. Am I right? And then you think about the fluid space and other things. But you missed one file over there, which is the H file. And among all these files, H file is the weakest. So this is how you go wrong in your entrance examination. So I'm 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 sure that all of you might be beginners and now you know like where you go wrong how do only certain people who write the entrance get into the uh, course and others don't get that is mainly because you think that these are simple questions but actually if you are not careful you will tend to make mistakes so we will have lots and lots of questions like this in our academy so that you can practice a lot before you go for the exam so, K-flex files are traditionally made from which shape blanks? We did tell in this uh, theory. Do you remember? K-flex files are made from? Yeah, very good, very good. So, this is how we learn. When we ask a question directly after a theory topic, you know the answer very well. Balance force technique is used for root canal preparation. What is the main force what is used in a balance force technique? I explained to you like there are two types of forces uh, in balance force 
quarter turn clockwise with an apical pressure, quarter turn, then you have an anti clockwise again with an apical pressure. So, what should be the answer? In balance force technique, we don't use a lateral force. Yeah, we use apical force. So, apical force is used. So, these, whatever questions I'm putting in this, is these are repeatedly asked in your entrance examination. So, these are the ones which you are also going to get. Paper points are sterilized by. There will be some questions from. Paper points can never be boiled. It's only sterilized in hot salt sterilizer. Okay. Most common type of motion in cave file. How do you how do you move a cave file inside the canal? So certain movements of the files also you need to know. Like usually it is uh, the balance force technique. It's basically linear. The most most common type of uh, motion of a cave file is linear. Because cave files are mainly nowadays used to find the path. It's called path finding. And for path finding, you go for a linear motion. Then cleaning of files between endronic treatment. So these are very, very common questions what have been asked. Between endronic treatment, we use a gauze soaked in hypochlorite solution. So today, what I wanted you all of you to know is that like, Preparing for entrance examination is not something which you all cannot do. All of you can do. But the thing is, it's not your knowledge what is what is actually ex, um, exhibited there. Um, even if you are knowledgeable also, that doesn't mean that you may, you, you get into that ranks. It's a lot of factors added to it. It's your motivation to study. That is one thing what we do in focus is that we have mentors who would be after you because many a times since all of us are graduates, we are busy with our own uh, lives. We may not have the ample time and motivation to study. So that motivation will be provided by the mentors. That is number one. Number two, we will have a timetable for you and you have to follow that, stick on to the timetable. And this timetable is something which we will guide you. So what all subjects to study when without omitting any, any subjects. And we have eminent faculties for all the subjects. So this is something which you can uh, rely on. And this is how the pattern goes. And along with this, we'll have a lot of recorded videos also for you to watch uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, which will help you a lot. So welcome all of you to this uh, particular world of uh, entrance preparation and wish you all success. Any questions you can ask. If you have any questions, 